So, the European Parliament just passed the copyright reform that lobbyists were so keen on getting. Yeah, that's, that's a big oof. Uh, this is gonna make my job a lot harder, and it's also gonna restrict free speech on the internet, so... Not really a great thing. But at least I have the Midwest Rapper Festival to look forward to later this week. It's Tuesday right now, and I've got two more days, and I do want to make one more video before I head out and everything is just gonna be Murph coverage. And I did want to make a getting started with do it guide, but uh, I think that needs a bit more care. So today we are going to do photogrammetry versus a real 3D scanner. Which one is better? Which one is better for which application? And yeah, which one is right for you? So you've probably heard about photogrammetry, where you go around with a camera, I'm gonna use my phone, uh, around an object and uh, just take a couple of photos, and there's software that is gonna stitch those photos together into a 3D model. By looking at, you know, the different perspectives you get out of each photo, it can determine how each part of the image moved, and it can reconstruct a 3D object from that. In the other corner, we have the Shining 3D Einscan SE. They also have an SP, which is a slightly better version of this, but functionally, these are the same. Uh, this is a pretty neat system. So it's got a projector in here that projects out a patterned light beam, and then it has some cameras on the side that kind of do the same thing as with photogrammetry, where they determine how each of those light beams has shifted in the image. And with that, it can reconstruct a 3D model as well. So to test out these two techniques, we're gonna use a few different models. These are kind of covering the entire spectrum of what you might be scanning from, you know, a simple white plaster cast, I think. I don't know what material this is. Yeah. This has no texture at all. This is just plain white. It has no color to it. I'm also going to be using this Gremlin Goblin uh, that has a lot of texture that is also dark and non-reflective. This should be a best case scenario for both. And then I'm going to use this chrome skull to test how well, you know, these techniques can handle the extremely shiny materials that don't really have a texture to them at all. And I don't think either one of these techniques is going to capture this thing at all. You can go ahead and spray these with like a matte spray paint or some speckled stone-like texture, but you can do that to any model and it's roughly going to look like this. So you can turn several models into the best case scenario, but that's what we have this one for. So let's start with category number one, cost. Your phone is a good enough camera to do photogrammetry. You can take this, put it on manual mode and just walk around your objects. This is technically free if you have any sort of, of recent mid-range or high-end phone. Software for photogrammetry is also free and open source. You do need a relatively powerful computer to just calculate the 3D model, but it's just gonna take longer on less powerful hardware. So basically you probably have all the tools you need already to do photogrammetry. The Einscan SE, on the other hand, you get the scanner head, you get a turntable, you get a bunch of adapters and plates and stuff. Um, yeah, obviously this is gonna cost more than photogrammetry. Uh, the Einscan SE is around 1500 euros, which is, you know, more than a laptop and a phone. So cost goes to photogrammetry. So next up, let's look at flexibility. How versatile are these tools? So first of all, photogrammetry. You can take your camera out anywhere. You can scan anything out in the world as long as the texture is correct, as long as it has some sort of texture to it. You do need it to be somewhat well lit for the camera to pick it up, but otherwise you're pretty free with what you want to scan. Cars, for example, because of their, their reflective scale, don't often pick up well, but large statues or buildings that don't have a lot of reflective glass usually pick up very well too. So the Einscan and most other 3D scanners are more of a local, you bring your scanned object to the scanner kind of approach. So the Einscan actually Actually has two different use cases. So first of all, you have the one with the turntable where you just plop your object onto the turntable itself and then this thing sits on the stand. Let me assemble this real quick. Kind of like so, and then of course this guy spins and the scanner projects its light onto the object. So this is number one, how you can use it. So in a static way, where you just plop your objects on and off, but you can also take the scanner itself and take it off of this platform and put it onto a tripod 
and use the scanner without the rotating platform where you have it static in one place, it takes one perspective, then you move it to another perspective, it takes another shot and it merges those automatically. However, there is the issue of stray light because the projector in here is not very bright. You can't really use it outdoors in the sun. Even a cloudy day is too much stray light already. So really you're kind of limited to indoor scans or scans at night. Nighttime with no stray light is actually the best case scenario for the scanner, which is why you typically even want to dim your room lights or turn them off when you're scanning something with this indoors. With photogrammetry, you can also use any camera you have, be it a phone, a mirrorless or a DSLR, or even your drone and fly around an object, a castle, a mountain or something, and then import those photos into the same software and you're gonna get a large scale 3D scan. So flexibility, given the limited size that this thing can scan and the requirements for your lighting setup, uh, I think photogrammetry is way more flexible and way more versatile for scanning things. So another point for the humble camera. So next up, let's look at how capable these techniques are when it comes to different surfaces and just varying types of objects. And this one is actually pretty clear. With this darker textured golem, both of these techniques do a really great job. Uh, of course, with photogrammetry, you do have to make sure that you're capturing all the angles, but both of these capture this guy just absolutely perfectly. Next up, this plain white textureless cherub is still pretty good on both of these techniques. The Einscan SE just has an absolute blast with it because this is like the best case scenario for it. It's bright, it's not very shiny, it's actually pretty matte, and overall it just fits into the scan volume perfectly, so this is kind of the best case scenario for the Shining 3D scanner. With photogrammetry you do run into the limits of the technology, where for example the legs and arms just are smooth textures. It still kind of picks up based on your lighting setup, so if you have a lot of highlights and shadows, those are still being picked up as texture. But overall, this is, this is kind of an edge case for photogrammetry. This may or may not work. But on the other end of the spectrum, this is a white model, so this works really well with the Shining 3D scanner. If this were black, of course, it wouldn't reflect a lot of light out of the scanner. So a black object, even if it's just a matte black surface, is kind of really hard for this one already. So this one's good because it's white, but if it were black, you'd have a bit of a harder time. But that also applies to photogrammetry. And lastly, the chrome skull. Uh, neither of these scanners are really able to capture this particularly well or at all. So that's kind of a neutral between both of them. With a super shiny model like this, if you put, for example, chalk powder over it or talcum powder, anything that is kind of matte, then the Einscan is gonna have a much easier time, whereas photogrammetry is still going to sort of struggle with this um, because it's it doesn't have a ton of you know texture to it where you can make out individual bits like up here where you have all these individual patterns and features on it. So when it comes to capability, the Einscan is a clear winner for this one. So next up, let's look at speed, and that doesn't just mean how fast the actual scan is, but also the post-processing time. Even on a high-end computer, both of these reconstruction methods are really hardware intensive. Um, they both use NVIDIA CUDA acceleration, but they also both require a ton of CPU power. Uh, I'm running Threadrippers and 1070 Ti's on this one and 1080 Ti on the workstation, and still the photogrammetry software Meshroom takes upwards of 10-15 minutes to reconstruct a 3D model out of uh, a set of like 10-15 phone photos. So that takes a long while. The Einscan software is still not instantaneous or anything, but it is a lot quicker and takes less time to reproduce. And on top of that, you also kind of have to account for the time that it takes you to scan something or to take the actual input material. With a phone or a camera, you do have to run around your object and just make sure you cover every single angle, up, down, uh, and all around the object. On the Einscan, the turntable does a lot of work for you. And what you can also do is you can then reorient the model in a different way and rescan it, and it's automatically going to stitch it together into one complete model. So the scanning process here is really automated and integrated. And you know, with photogrammetry, you take the photos on one device, then you take those over an SD card or a USB cord, you transfer it onto your computer and then load it into the software. Here, it's just an all-in-one solution and it's all in, in like one neat package. The scan times themselves on the Einscan, especially if you use a lot of subdivisions on the rotation, 
very easily pile up into like the 10, 15 minute range as well, but it's an automated process that you don't have to babysit. That combined with the fact that the processing itself is fast on the Einscan, I think is another point for the Shiny 3D Einscan SE. So let's look at ease of use. And these two are, you know, more than just the hardware itself. It's also the software that comes along with it. With the EinScan and any other like hardware scanner, you do have some setup time. This is like a few minutes of assembling this and then you have to calibrate it before use. If you've taken it apart, you put this plate on uh, into this stand and then you scan it from every perspective. It's integrated into the software though and that kind of guides you through the calibration process. And you do have to do that every time you take it out of the box and reassemble it just to make sure everything is perfectly lined up. With photogrammetry, you kind of just take out your phone and you start snapping. You do have to set it, for example, to manual mode just to make sure that your exposure is correct. And with this one, I had the problem that my phone wanted to expose it too dark, especially on a bright background like this. So you do have to set your phone to manual mode for perfect results and then you know just walk around it and take the photos. As far as how easy it is to then take your scan data into your processing software, um, the Einscan SE is way easier because like I mentioned, it just directly transfers it into the software. With your phone, you do have to download it somehow onto your computer, USB cord, whatever. And then one thing that I also ran into specifically with the G7, the LG G7, uh, is that it doesn't write the metadata for what the 35 millimeter equivalent uh, focal length is. So basically how wide your lens is, it doesn't write it into the image data. So the software had a bit of a hard time figuring out how wide that is. So you can either change the defaults in Meshroom or you can add that information to the image metadata. But that's an extra step each time you want to scan something with basically all the photos you take. Then when it comes to actually getting the 3D model out of your software, um, the Einscan software set gives you the options to, for example, merge different perspectives. So you scan your object like this then like that, or you scan it in a totally different orientation and it adds all those details together automatically. You can also trim unwanted objects. For example, if you had uh, your model set on a platform or you just have some areas that you don't want scanned, you can trim those off very easily. Um, on the other hand, with photogrammetry, your software, at least Meshroom in this case, just gives you the raw mesh, just the raw uh, obj file. And then you have to take it into another piece of software to trim off unwanted edges. Or if you can't get to every angle of your model, you actually have to uh, put it up on some sort of a stand that you then have to trim off or manually scan different perspectives and then merge those. It's a bit more of a manual process, to be honest. And it's not really that easy, that streamlined, though Meshroom is a really great software. And overall with photogrammetry, there's just a lot more manual work involved that kind of requires you to know what you're doing. Um, also things like exporting the STL and then getting the right resolution so that it doesn't crash any software you try to load it into. You get really high detail models that may actually be too much detail. With the Einscan, you get those export options on how much detail you actually want. So overall for usability and ease of use, I think the Einscan is the overall better product simply because it is a complete product of the hardware and the software that kind of work together. With photogrammetry, you're more open to using whatever you have but that also means it is piecemeal out of this piece of software and this piece of software, and you have to take your models through each of those. So usability, Einscan. So let's talk about accuracy and precision and just basically how well you can use these as a measuring tool. Now with photogrammetry, you don't really get models that are to scale. With photogrammetry, what you can do is just put an object into the scan that you know has some sort of known dimension, the width of this thing or the length of this ruler, you know exactly, you put it next to your model and you scan it alongside uh, your model and then scale your resulting scan for this to match. That is a manual process. And sometimes you also get some weird distortions just on photogrammetry if your camera lens has distortions and the software doesn't really account for them properly. So you don't always get perfectly to scale and to proportion results, but you can get pretty close. On the Einscan, because it is calibrated with this dot pattern card that is, you know, very well-known spacing, you get really high accuracy 
results. Um, you can basically take measurements off of your finished part if the scan is good. If you don't have any glitches in your model, you can literally use this as a measuring device. It is really good for two scale scans. And what it is also really good at is producing detail. With the EinScan, you can pretty much see every little grain on these models. You can see all the details in the wings and every little bit of imperfection in the scan. It is amazing how much detail you can get out of this scanner. With photogrammetry, you can get close. You can get really close in detail reproduction. I, I always hold up my phone while I talk about it. Uh, you can get really close with detail reproduction, but it is highly dependent on the model. If you have something smooth like this, you're not gonna get a lot of detail. If you can't see it, then photogrammetry cannot pick up on it. So that's just another limitation of photogrammetry as is. So accuracy and precision goes to the eye scan. So overall, I think the EinScan is a better scanner than photogrammetry with a camera. But that is kind of true in many cases. Dedicated hardware for doing a job is usually gonna do a better job than using what you have and, and kind of adapting it to it. Photogrammetry is great, but it's not suitable for everything, whereas this is also not suitable for everything because of the limited build space and you know also limitations with reflective material and external lighting. So while the EinScan SE did take a lot of wins over just plain photogrammetry, you also have to keep in mind that this is free. There's literally zero dollars except for what you need in compute power and in camera hardware, but you probably already have that. So comparing something that is free to something that costs literally 1500 euros, you know, you kind of have to put that into perspective. So in the end, as with everything, it depends. The EinScan is really great for scanning high detail parts that are kind of small and fit on the turntable, whereas photogrammetry, you just always have with you. You just have your phone with you. You can be out in the city somewhere, you see something cool, you walk around and you scan it with your phone, you just take a few pictures, that's all there is to it, and you have your model. When you get home, you plop that into your computer, let it process, and there you go. So I think this is one of the big advantages of photogrammetry. You can use it anywhere in pretty much any situation, whereas this is just highly situational and you need the right objects and the right setup to use this productively. So overall, those were some of the pros and cons for using dedicated scanner hardware like the EinScan SE um, or using photogrammetry. I hope you learned something. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, get subscribed, support this channel on Patreon, do all those things. And I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. And I also want to give a big shout out to all the patrons who are already supporting this channel or other creators online. A special shout out to long term patrons Jeffrey Nicoletic, Rudolf Wang, Francisco Peebles, Paul Arden, Christopher Day, Phil Struder, Marek Serra, William Divine, Brian Raker, Andy Fair, Dexter Gillette, Jonathan Malin, James C. Foley, Mike McGee, Marcus Harms, and Robert Hornberg, as well as Nathan Haste. Dorian Gray and Matthew Oswald who have joined recently in the Shouter tier. If you want to join the Patreon campaign as well, there is the big link on screen right now. Again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel and other creators. You guys rock. Alright, see you all at the Midwest Rapper Festival.